you see in a, an environment where that Terminator 2 40 years yeah. in the future scenario could exist? Um, the probabilities are very low is how I would, I would describe it. Like very, very low because these are these, it, when people worry about like Terminator two, they are worrying about, um, a system becoming sentient and just ignoring everything that it was programmed to do. And like, you know what you told me not to, uh, you know, that I did not have the moral authority to make lethal decisions about use of lethal force. And I'm going to ignore that. And that's not what engineered systems do. Right. I tell people like my car has a 0% probability of all of a sudden, uh, you know, becoming a flying car and flying around. Right. And so, um, the probabilities were like the, the where in another thing, like what we're focused on is a, a narrow segment of AI versus an artificial general intelligence. If you enabled artificial general intelligence with these robotic systems, I think you could end up in that scenario. But I think people are they're savvy enough not to do that. Right? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. There was a, a fairly recent report, maybe it's bullshit, maybe you can debunk it or not, that was talking about uh, the U.S. military um, utilizing applications where that actually did happen though where do you yeah that was debunked that? yeah okay so yeah they're, they're like yeah, it was, yeah whatever they they came up with like a complete blank life they retracted it yeah okay they're like oh that's well it was they had wargamed it and then like and then someone they they this media piece was published as if that is what happened when it was like someone was like contemplating oh what if this happened right yeah so it was total bullshit total bullshit so to your knowledge there's never been an instance where where some sort of AI system with lethal capability has ignored the human commands or, you know, done something. Yeah. That hasn't happened. Hasn't happened. Yeah. And you think that it's impossible to happen. I think it's extremely low probabilities. Yeah. Again, you're going to, the, that at that point you're talking about, it's different technologies. That's when you start, you, instead of using narrow AIs to build products and systems, you'd say, I'm going to use an artificial general intelligence, which does not exist today. Yeah. Um, to actually uh, build and field those systems. Okay, so... And command those systems. Okay. Uh, playing devil's advocate, it's probably safe to assume that within the confines of the United States and our, our commerce that that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. However, yeah. what if another country did put something like that together where yeah. that is a possibility? Yeah. I think it's... um. I think you start to see... Uh, I think as we get closer to... In AGI, you'll start to see policies around and like international policies around this. And right, the, the United States military uh, has a really good, like fundamentally, well, first, so let me take a step back. Um, as a, you know, former warfighter, former SEAL, who has had to make the uh, uh, moral decision about the use of lethal force on the battlefield, I fundamentally believe it's a very human thing to do, right? And I actually don't, I fundamentally believe that should never be given to a computer, right? It's just, it's a human thing to say, you know, to take another person's life. Um, and U.S. military policy echoes that sentiment. NATO policy echoes that sentiment. And I really don't take this person for their word at all, right? Chairman Xi, he has even said that too, uh, yeah. of China, right? He's like, I don't think we should do this. Yeah. I was like, well, at least he's saying that. I don't know if he believes it. Yeah. Um, uh, but maybe he does because um, yeah. <laughs> it would be bad for everybody. Yeah. Um, and so... Uh, I, in that sense, I um, again, if we got close to an AGI, I think you would start to see policy saying you're not allowed to apply this to military applications um, or give this access to certain things um, that would enable military applications. Yeah. So. So you're, you're confident. Like I, I don't want to like you wouldn't give an AGI. I'd be like, here's all the tools. Go build yourself, you know, whatever robotic yeah. warfare systems that yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm tracking. That's, which is uh, just, a, you know, that's Avengers Ultron 2 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Avengers 2 Ultron. That's what happens. Are you a fan of uh, of the Marvel series? I, I like I enjoyed them when, um, you know, watching them, whatever, yeah. when they were coming they out. Nine, nine more, right? Yeah. I think it's. I, I still yeah. like them. But. I, I like the, the end game. And then it was, yeah. you know, in the spider Man's, but yeah. now, no yeah. more. now you're, you're over <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I'm over yeah. it. Um, what, what are some of the biggest operational challenges um, that, that you guys face, I guess, now in terms of developing and deploying autonomous defense systems? Yeah, um, there are, are a lot of operational challenges. Um, 
It's it's but but honestly, like the 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 biggest challenges are are around the market and people understanding like what's happening, what's going on. Like we're operational challenges can be solved, right? And they are they are we solve them every single day in terms of like folks understanding the capability that's being provided. Why are we doing this? How's it employed? What do we do, etc. Um, the market challenges are the things that uh, like I spend a lot of time on, and like how can I get people to understand like what's going on here, why this is important. I tell people um, like. December 1938, the Germans discovered nuclear fission was possible. Everybody decided, you know what? You can build an atomic bomb. Uh, we started the Man Manhattan Project, I think, got approved in, like, 1941, kick-started in 1942. We spent $30 billion. Uh, we deployed the A-bomb in '45 and set the world order for the next 80 years. Um, that nuclear fission moment has passed, right? That, that ha we, I would claim, like, look, when we put a... AI piloted quadcopter on 2018, that's like, you can do this. Uh, when we, you know, won the DARPA Alpha dogfight in 2020, you can do this. When we flew F-16s, again, AI piloted F-16s against human piloted F-16s, you can do this. That Manhattan Project moment hasn't happened yet. Um, and what I worry about, right, in, in that case, right, the U.S. is like, holy smokes, we understand how this is going to change the world and we need to actually move and deploy resources against it. I worry that something, someone like China, um, is like, oh, wow, look what the United States just did. Let's mobilize and deploy resources against this because we believe this is going to change the world order. Yeah. Um, that's the you know, principal concern. So I work a lot with U.S. and Western allied governments to like, it's like, look, this is, you know, this is what this means. This is the impact that it's going to have. Again, one person can command 10,000, 100,000, 1 million different drones, just a single person. Yeah. Um, and that amount... It's just going to change, change deterrence, change military forces. I, I tell like smaller militaries, I think there's no reason why um, a military with a $20 billion budget can't have the same impact as the U.S. military, absent nuclear weapons, right, in, in the nuclear triad, but the same impact that the U.S. military has. Yeah. So, so in that same vein, I've got a Patreon question uh, yeah. from M. Bush Valls uh, that asks, what if any guardrails can be used to limit AI's capabilities long term? Beyond oaths, codes of conduct, et cetera, which, if any, rogue yeah. nation states may never adhere to. Yeah, limited compute. Um, and actually, I was with, um, yeah, I, I was with some some very senior folks uh, in the executive branch, and it's good. There are people who understand that. Like AI depends on computers, and I applaud our government and the actions that we've taken um, to limit access to compute. Yeah. That's like that, uh, and that would be the. That's how you like you starve it, right? That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So I, I guess you know my, um, I guess you know small mind by comparison. When I think of like what do I imagine as a worst case scenario? Is let's say there's a, a fighter jet, you know, with with armament on it, or even something more significant, and no different than you know, like it's a computer system right yep. so no different than there's times where my phone does shit that you can't really explain it's like yeah. the, and it's not just oh the screen froze it's like it'll just start typing shit and i'm not touching the keyboard or moving yeah. shit it's just like the fuck you know and it freezes up or whatever like is that an apples to oranges comparison like do wonky things like that happen or can they happen um, i think wonky things can happen but like that's not i wouldn't call them catastrophic things and in terms of like how i think about it too like you'll have bugs right and part of what we do and like it's like you make it reliable you make it predictable you eliminate all the bugs in a software system um but yeah that's that's how you know I, i'm not and there are reasons why, like, your computer will do that that are very explainable. Um, Can you explain them? Because I don't fucking <laughs> Yeah, <get> <laughs> I mean, like, if I, if you, like, we, we could we could figure it out together. Could reverse engineer. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm sitting there, and now all of a sudden porn is on my phone. I didn't pull it up. <laughs> How do you explain that one? <laughs> what no, I swear I didn't pull it up. I was just, I was taking a shower. The screen was on. Something happened. There was water spray, <laughs> you know? and now it's all fucked up. <laughs>